Welcome back to The Hot Slice. I am creative director Josh Cowan, and joining me today is executive editor Denise Greer. Hello, Denise. Hi. Hello, Josh. How are you doing? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. You know, this is, uh, I'm just joining you for the intro here. You know, yeah, this is kind yeah. of a, this is a nay solo cast with uh, <laughs> our guest today, uh, which I thoroughly enjoyed. Uh, so, you know, by all means, you, you can do more of those if, on your own if you want to, because you, you <laughs> took it and you ran with it. You were just well, fine. It was a lot of fun. I tell you what. So, uh, so how this interview came about is um, I was talking to Clayton Kruger. That's who we're talking to uh, from okay. Ferelli's Pizza there in uh, Tacoma, Washington. Um, and um, Clayton is just, uh, he's just fire when it comes to marketing. He just, he knows what's happening. He knows how to anticipate marketing. Um, he, you know, he was, he's been an early adapter to a lot of different things that are happening in the industry. Uh, so I tapped him for uh, my marketing trends article, which is now in the March issue. So if you go to pizzatoday.com, you actually see it on the front big header um, where, you know, marketing trends, click on it and you can read the article. Uh, but it was such a good, thorough interview where we were talking about a lot of things that are happening in the industry. Uh, and I couldn't just leave it there. We, we really needed to, uh, to put this on a bigger scale. So that's how uh, we brought it to the hot slice. Yeah. I mean, Clayton, of course, we all know Clayton's a wonderful guy. He's very giving with his, his knowledge. And, and there are not many people probably in the industry with better marketing knowledge than Clayton. So uh, if you, you know, also, if you see him at the show expo, uh, seek him out. He's great to talk to. He's one of my favorite people in the business. So enjoy this solo cast episode. Well, it's not really solo cast. You got Clayton on there, but it's they it's going a one out on alone. One. Denise one on going, one. Yeah, one on one. Denise going alone. Uh, enjoy the hot <laughs> slice. <laughs> All right, let's do it. First off, uh, you know, just to start with, what do you think are kind of the hot things right now that you, that we're going to see um, this year and within the next year for um, pizzerias and marketing? One of the things that we're seeing <laughs> is the, the ghost kitchens have been around for, for a while. Yeah. And it's like virtual restaurant thing. But it's kind of been this thing that's sort of over there. It's like, oh, yeah, we could have a ghost kitchen. That's an option. You know, it's, it's a thing. But now it's becoming almost, it's, it's really in, in our face all of a sudden. Mm -hmm. And the opportunities are, uh, we're really having to make some decisions around that. Um, mm -hmm. We were approached by a virtual restaurant company uh, last week that wants to partner with us. And essentially, we would be the fulfillment um, company f locally or regionally rather mm -hmm. for their orders and then they're identifying other pizzerias in different regions for their national brand that would fulfill their orders and oh, wow. and so like just really unique mm -hmm. partnerships that we hadn't even thought of before or entertained are now almost kind of like wow why that's a new that's something we probably need to give some serious consideration to so yeah, there's things like that that are coming to virtual restaurants, the ghost kitchens um, that I think are going to be a big deal. Obviously, the people that were able to kind of navigate this pandemic the best were those that had uh, invested in their own technology, their uh, strategic delivery partnerships, whatever that looked like, whether that mm -hmm. was internal or external with third parties, um, really having those in place. Uh, which is a little bit more operational than than marketing, but the reality is we really view that as a marketing um, thing. Yeah. You know, our we've always been real big on you know what we refer to as four walls marketing um, mm -hmm. here, and so basically the the goal of four walls marketing, as you know, is to try to get the people that come through your doors to come back more frequently. Yeah. Uh, we're we're looking at this third party delivery as new customer acquisition. And you're paying the price, you're paying the 20% or you know, upwards of 30% in some cases. Um, we've been able to negotiate far better rates, but uh, to acquire these new customers that aren't, they're not looking for you. They, they found you because you're on this platform. That's, that's the thing. And so our goal has been, how do we cast this net? How wide do we want to cast this net? In other words, how many of these platforms do we want to be partnered with and then get these customers to give us a try. But the, but the next step is how do we convert them to, instead of being a, you know, DoorDash customer to be a Ferelli's customer, 
and, mm -hmm. and what what's our conversion tactics? What what kind of um, collateral are we using to, yeah. to get them to become to get them to order from our app next time? And what are the benefits for them for doing that? And what, obviously, we, there's huge benefits for us for them to do that. We get the data, we own the data, we own the customer at that point. We're retargeting them. Um, we we've got some really cool strategic partnerships that we've developed there. So mm -hmm. I think the people that were able to 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 really um, that were immediately positioned to survive this pandemic were those that have already invested in, in those kind of techniques and mm -hmm. those that hadn't realized they needed to do so and they were kind of behind the ball on that yeah but they're, they're probably if, if they've made it this far they're, they're probably catching up and, and have done some work to get caught up yeah we had pizzerias basically starting online ordering in a day like literally yeah. turning it on <laughs> you know, and just activating Crazy. it within a day or yeah. we had people switching, you know, how hard it is to switch POS systems, right? Yes, you I know do. what a challenge that is. Yes, uh, and we've, we've had so many switching POS systems, yeah. to ones that have uh, more data driven. Um, yeah. You know, I think that is, you know, that's the one, one of those marketing trends that we're seeing that, that, is definitely out there this year is being able to leverage that data and like you said 100%. conversion and so taking that third you know because this is a challenge a lot of pizzerias are dealing with is if they work with third-party companies how to get that data and how to use data yeah, absolutely absolutely so you know for us again when when the customers a customer of the third party and not of yours you're it's next to impossible to to get and own that data there's there's ways mm -hmm. um and you can get some data but it's it's really not data that allows you to retarget that guest at the end of the day what you want to do with data is get the customer back through the door yeah and so if you you can you can have data like hey we have this you know these people are visiting you from doordash or whatever but until you can reach out to that guest yeah. legally and and make a uh, meaningful connections with how often they come what they purchase when they do come what level of tier are they in with regard to spend um, what's the day part that they frequent most often do you want to take that information and try to convert them mm -hmm. like say they're a lunchtime guest you want to try to convert them to be a dinner time guest as well uh, and, and persuade them to do that you can't do that until you until it's your data yeah. and it's never going to be with those with those third-party companies you know, yeah you, you have to form your own partnerships and you have to convert someone into your uh to into your, your system yeah, to and that's where i know you guys are really good at uh you know the collateral marketing the uh, the what you see marketing the right. you know what arrives in your box and uh you know exactly. and making sure every uh, making sure the brand just looks so tight and that everything's available to them to reach out to you right yeah, thank you so much for saying that. That is a huge goal of ours, and and I think we've made a, some huge strides in that in the past uh, probably five six years now. We mm -hmm. we um, <clears throat> made a strategic hire about six years ago. Uh, my colleague Rob, and he is uh, our director of design and promotions, and so mm -hmm. his whole kind of job is just really to just really keep that brand um, consistent and. Mm -hmm also fresh and exciting <clears throat> so like you're like your flannel you have on right yeah there. exactly so any kind, of, any kind of digital uh collateral or or even um physical collateral he's he's in an office designing that he's over there designing right now which is awesome because oh, that's cool. having someone who's just dedicated to that i mean obviously you need to be in a position to be able to do that we've been growing this business for 25 years and that's afforded us the ability to have a guy like rob on staff but and yeah. i get to a lot of people you know i go to the expo and i talk to you know mom pop shops and they're, that's not where they're at that's not their reality and mm -hmm. that's okay you know but, yeah. but um you know just being mindful of that just hey here's here's the strategy how can we do that from a, a single unit you know how can we take third party and use it to our advantage to just cast this net out there bring people into the pizzeria and then convert them to our online ordering mm -hmm. platform our data aggregator how can we get them into our system and then how do we retarget them and yeah. You know, it doesn't have to be slick and polished. It just has to work. Heck yeah, I hear you. Yeah. Um, you know, and you, you know, you are one of the um, the guys that really knows what you're doing when it comes to uh, digital and uh, and and social and things like that. And I feel like social has definitely changed. I mean, especially with some of these, uh, you know, newer platforms that have come on to the scene. Uh, there's even gaming platforms that people are going, you know, geeking out on like Twitch and things. Um, 
and so and and tech talk and and yeah. you know i guess uh you know uh i mean there are a lot of them out there <laughs> right now but um you know i think the short form video is that do you think that's going to be like understanding how to do short short form video and how to expand your reach is that going to work for people's goals I think that it's, uh, it's uh, we look at it in the form of an opportunity and yeah. just because it's an opportunity doesn't mean you need to like go for it. You know, mm -hmm. I think you really got to decide, does that fit with my brand? Does that fit with the demographic that we're chasing? Does that fit with X, Y, Z, you know, um, for us, we, we've had a kind of mantra around social since day one, as you know, we were early adopters, mm -hmm. MySpace, oh, really yeah. MySpace, MySpace I mean, yes. that was, that was <laughs> super cool. Um, you know, so we've, we've seen it, we've done it. Um, and at the end of the day, our, our kind of overarching mantra there is let's not bite off more than we can chew. We could spend yeah. a gazillion man hours trying to put together these short form videos on TikTok, or we could be uh, over here on Twitch doing live streaming mm -hmm. of, you know, who knows what, maybe someone's baking pizzas. It's hard to, you know, <laughs> The, the yeah. opportunities are kind of endless because yeah. the World Wide Web is a big old place now. Yeah. Um, but you have a finite resource and time. We mm -hmm. We're all bound by that resource of time. Yeah. Constraint. constraint. And uh, you have to kind of decide what's, what's the best use of my time. And there's a balance mm -hmm. there. And it's going to vary. There's no right answer for that's, that's like a one size fit all. It's yeah. got to be specific to your pizzeria. Hey, we do have the time for this. We are going to invest in TikTok. Well, no, you know what? That doesn't, that's mm -hmm. not going to any good because really we're going after those people's parents and we want them yeah. to come through the door or whatever it is. So yeah. um, for us specifically, we haven't dove too much into the short form video uh, world. Um, we're trying to just stay, Instagram's become our number one, you know, area of focus. Yeah. Are you it's guys doing that. reels now? Because we've done. We've I've done just now reels. started getting into no, reels, it's, and they're just it's, it's, they're it's, addicting. It's, they are. They are addicting, <laughs> especially to watch. You just kind of keep scrolling, but uh, yeah. And I think you know what you're seeing there too is just how uh, you got these the Instagram, the Facebook, Instagram conglomerate, right? Mm -hmm. Saying, "Oh, okay, anything you can do, we can do too," and they're just trying yeah. to steal that market from people like TikTok and, and Snapchat yeah. and everything else. So, and that's a good example. Like Snapchat's a good example. We mm -hmm. we had sort of dipped our toe into the Snapchat thing, and what we found out was most of the people that were in, engaging with our Snapchats were our own employees. <laughs> and so it was <laughs> like, funny. well, you know, we there's already other got ways, them. <laughs> yeah, there's other ways to reach our employees. So we sort of were like, okay, that doesn't make a ton of sense. Um, let's let's yeah. kibosh that. And, and and then, you know, at the same time, Instagram added the stories feature, which was essentially yeah. what Snapchat was. And so there you go. You have, we had a solution that just kind of worked better. Yeah. So I think people just have to keep, you know, keep your eyes open for new opportunities um, that kind of align with your brand, align with where you're at with your mm -hmm. uh, resources and especially time and make sure that you're going after the target market that you, that you want to, that you want to get. Well, that's yeah. cool. Um, so let's, let's hit on. So there are a couple, I've got a list over here of all these, sure, sure. all these crazy marketing trends that I've yeah. seen out there in the world. And, and some of them I didn't even, I didn't even write down. Cause I'm just like, yeah, no, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but yeah. there are some other ones, you know, I think um, voice search is definitely becoming more important. And I think about it how I do. I say, hey, Siri, yeah, don't, no, don't. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, did my phone light up too? <laughs> yeah, probably. Um, but, you know. Um, I don't know where my phone is, actually. Now, now exactly. I'm gonna, see, this is, it's like, oh, my God, where's my phone? Now I'm in this panic. Yeah. Yeah, like, so. Um, you know, and I think that that's definitely something that I feel like is on the horizon, but do you think that it's important for, um, uh, pizzerias to look at how, how they're coming up in those results? I do. And, 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 you know, we, to be fair, we haven't spent probably enough time on that yet as well, but I do think it's super important. I, I sat through a seminar a couple of years back. I was at a convention and I think it was called, um, F FS Tech, Food Service Technology mm -hmm. Conference down in Dallas. And there was a presenter there that was making the case that these voice queries that people do, you know, when you when you search Google on your on your phone or on, on the web, you can like scroll through your pages of results that you get and decide what's yeah. the best one for me. But when you ask, you know, Alexa or your phone or whatever, hey, 
where's, you know, what's this thing or where's this yeah. place or whatever it is, it's going, to, it's, it's going to come back with one response. Yeah. You know, like here's the result I, that I found. And so there is really something to that as far as do we want it to, do you want it to be your place, your pizzeria? Mm -hmm. Okay, well, let's, we better figure this out. Um, and I think, you know, it starts with SEO just in general with your, with your site. And there's mm -hmm. some th things you can do. Um, I'm, I forget what it was called off the top of my head. I'm see if I can jump into my page really quick. But um, there was these, oh, that's what they're called, schema tags. Schema so, tags. Okay. Yeah, schema tags. So you can, um, and really, so like one of the things that this presenter was saying was that uh, there was all these kind of languages, like coding languages across yeah. the World Wide Web, right? And they needed some way to kind of uh, make it universal. And these schema tags were part of the universal language that um, these search aggregators, Google and yeah. Yahoo, et cetera, are, are now looking for these schema tags as the universal language oh, wow. that they speak. <laughs> And so we went through a couple of years ago after that conference and added schema tags to all of our store pages on our website. I need to do that with pizza today. <laughs> I, mean, I, I think um, that's helped with our SEO. You know, we don't pay for any kind of um, services like AdWords or, you know, mm -hmm. Google search rankings. We just do everything we can to, to keep our website up to date, accurate, yeah. Um, you know, we manage our Google business pages. We go in there and manipulate those whenever necessary uh, to make sure that they're reflecting the most accurate information. Yeah. When you just take the time to do those things, your search results automatically improve and, um, you know, you see your SEO be high. When your SEO is high, if someone, if someone asks, you know, Siri or, or Google or Aunt Alexa a question, uh, you have a better chance of it being you just already. So yeah. that's kind of right away step one is to just make sure you have the tools that you can control dialed mm -hmm. in and then beyond that uh now there's other companies out there that are trying to help you be the top you know yeah. clear results and that's where we probably could have a couple of conversations on our side is with yeah. some of the strategic companies that claim to be able to help you with that as a matter of fact one of them reached out to me a while back and they're they're like hey um i sent you something in the mail let me know when you got it and i received this package it was a, a google home uh, mini device and they called like a week later like did you get the package and I said yeah and they said okay plug it in and now ask it um, what's the best pizza in Tacoma or whatever yeah and and he's like did it come up with you and I was like well no and he's like okay that's what our business does and it's like well that was a very clever uh, sales that is that's, I, that's a pretty I, good sales tactic yeah. right and there also thank you for the <laughs> smart device it's my first yeah. and only smart device so thank you um, yeah, yeah. Yes. Wow, that's pretty awesome. For over 32 years, the multi-award-winning PDQ POS system has consistently been a top-rated point-of-sale system for pizzerias, delivery, and quick service. With built-in and seamless integrations to all top-tier third-party platforms, native online ordering and rewards, contactless POS functionality, and a delivery toolkit app that enhances all aspects of delivery, PDQ POS will help your restaurant achieve sustained growth while saving time, effort, and costs. Learn more today at pdqpos.com or call 877-968-6430. That's 877-968-6430. Performance Food Service is proud to deliver high quality products, innovative technology, and custom operational solutions to restaurants of all sizes across the country. The flagship division of Performance Food Group with deep roots in the restaurant industry, Performance Food Service has been the exclusive distributor of the Roma family of brands for more than 65 years. This signature relationship has allowed Performance Food Service to become a leader in the pizza and Italian segment of food service nationwide. Uh, let's see here. Let me, let me think about some of these other ones that I've got. Um, uh, you know, I guess SMS is still like going to be pretty important. And um, now I don't know if, um, you know, because I, I have seen a little bit about, you know, SMS and even like geofencing and the whole idea that, you know, is there some privacy issues? Will that affect your, you know, your relationship with your customers if you engage in those? Um, but with SMS, because they're opting into that, you know, I don't know what you think about that. Well, I think, you know, for us, we have SMS tied in with our loyalty program. So yeah. it's really a matter of, you know, 
first of all, there's kind of two sides of it. The side that you just brought up, which is do people actually want to be contacted in that way? Is that invasive mm -hmm. or since they've opted in, is that okay? But the, but the other side of it um, is cost. There's a, there's a, there's a, there's a cost with SMS, you know, you're, yeah. you're, you're paying for every person you're hitting. So for us, we've got a pretty large database of people now we've been growing for the last 20 years uh, of loyal loyalty customers. And so we have, you know, uh, 150,000 people that we could hit with a wow. text. Well, that's, that's going to be a significant cost of money. That's not something that we want to do once or even four times a week or anything like that. Yeah. Uh, and, and so, so there's kind of the two sides of it, like a, is it cost effective? B um, is it invasive? Mm -hmm. And for us, both of those answers are probably, yeah, mm -hmm. uh, it is, it is uh, uh, cost inhibitive and it is a little bit invasive. So we try to be really mindful of when we use it for those two reasons combined. Mm -hmm. um, and we have it kind of set up some of our uh, rewards when, when someone earns a reward that is maybe like their annual birthday reward or, or, mm -hmm. or like their annual membership reward or something like that. Yeah. That's the time where it's kind of automated. We send that out, yeah. but we're, we're going to rely more on the push notification feature of the, okay. of the app because the push notification essentially accomplishes the same thing. Mm -hmm. We get that push right to their phone, right to their lock screen on their phone. Mm -hmm. They see that they've got a notification from us. It's instant. And I mean, yeah. instant. if I hit push notification immediately on my phone, I have a, a, a thing. It's incredible how fast push notifications yeah. work. So they're instant. They essentially do the same thing. They're, they're branded. They come through with our logo yeah. on them, which is awesome. Um, and we can do different uh, emojis and things through push. Mm -hmm. and, and depending on, you know, you can't really do that through SMS because people have Androids or yeah. iPhones. So the, those emojis and things don't come through as well. So we really like the push notification more. Essentially accomplishes the same thing. And for us, it's built into the cost of the loyalty program. It's not. I was gonna say, yeah, is it yeah, is it a charge. extra charge or extra no. price? Oh, we'll see. Uh, that's free. even better. <laughs> free. So we sort of um, we do a little bit more with the push than we do with the SMS, and we find yeah, that and that's more. if they have your app, right? They have, they correct, have correct. To yeah. use your app, okay. And that's you know that's our goal is to just keep converting as, as many people as possible to that app. Again, cast mm -hmm. that net wide, bring them in. Ex like, don't give them. I mean, it's so beneficial for people to have our app that, yeah. that like, well, why would you say you either just hate saving money or, yeah. you know, so most people are like, yeah, no, absolutely. We want to stay in touch. We want to get your app. Uh, so they do that. And now we've, now we've got the ability to target them and, and get them with uh, meaningful promotions and, you know, and again, that's what the data is for, right? Is to yeah. not bombard these people with push notifications or mm -hmm. SMS messages, but to say, Hey, I'm reach, I'm, I'm going to, message this segment of our database yeah. because they would be interested based on their uh you know behavior with yeah. us in the thing that i'm sending them so and that's where you have the most results yeah now let's look let's look at advertising because i know advertising a lot of people a lot of pizzerias we uh, they just don't advertise at all yeah. i mean yeah. we have very few that advertise um or if we do i mean it's a smaller majority you know yeah. In your opinion, because I know you've done, you've dabbled into a lot of different uh, areas. You know what's what's worth it and what's not, especially in 2021. Yeah, I think the one of the things that's one of the things that's always been really tough with advertising in any industry and in any time era prior to the one we're living in right now <laughs> yeah. is being able to say. I mean, you know, the, the salespeople for these different mediums would be able to medias would be able to say. Uh, yeah, this is our demographic. It's soccer moms who are driving home on a Wednesday and they listen to this radio station or whatever, yeah. or, you know, uh, yeah. men watch this channel because it's sports. And so you're going to reach men and they're going to enjoy your sports themed commercial. They're, you know, they're going to tell you the, the data that they have, which is just this really broad yeah. brush stroke. But at the end of the day, you don't know who you're reaching. Uh, so targeting has always been an issue with broad, mm -hmm advertising strategies, yeah. <clears throat> whether that be television or, or TV, or excuse me, uh, radio, or even internet for that matter. But now 
or, or like, you know, outdoor billboards, et cetera. Like, yeah, yeah we could reach uh, 20,000 customers driving past us a day, but how many of them are looking at this picture, making meaningf meaningful decisions based on it? Yeah. Probably, probably not a lot. So um, th there's always kind of been that, but now with power of social, that's yeah. where you really get into the ability to target and, and, and break down, hey, you know what, within mm -hmm. a five mile radius of my store, I want to hit, um, you know, women from ages, uh, you know, 25 to 40 because mm -hmm. chances are their, their moms um, may, and maybe we'll pick some tags that have to do with being a mom and yeah. now we'll say hey let, let us make dinner easy so you know you can make uh, some really more targeted advertisements mm -hmm. through social media the problem is that you're you've seen over the past couple of years certainly this past year um, a real temperature change on apps like Facebook, where people yeah. are there, they might be hooked on it, they might be yeah. addicted, and we've all, you know, probably most of us have watched The Social Dilemma and kind of seen what, what's happening there yeah. behind the scenes, um, and kind of have a better understanding and are doing everything within our willpower, which is weak, to yeah. uh, <laughs> minimize our social media consumption, yeah. but, um, and so they're, they're still there, and we can still reach them that way, but people don't want to be there. You know, that's, the, that's what's changing is people don't yeah. want to be there. So uh, it's not that they're not there. It's that they don't want to be there. So to have your advertisements there, it's, it's a, it's becoming a little bit, um, although they're very effective, it's becoming a mm -hmm. place where you kind of don't necessarily want your ad to be associated with. The good yeah. news is that Facebook does also own Instagram as we know, and, and they have the ability through their advertising kind of Mm -hmm. arm on the back end of the, the site there to then use those same targeted messages on on instagram where people are still feeling yeah. much more comfortable much more uh happy yeah. to be part of that strategy so um, and the sponsored links are so like incognito they you know yeah. i've i've been sucked into sponsored links all over the place oh yeah, yeah <laughs> so. absolutely same, same. i've ordered i've <laughs> i've uh, uh oh, yeah, i've ordered pray. so many stupid things off instagram this past year and i'm just like i gotta stop ordering so with instagram it's never what i it's never what it shows on the thing. I don't know why I keep getting sucked. I always say I'm going to buy those things off of Instagram. I'm like, man, they're hitting me on with all the stuff that I want and oh, need. And they're then, so good. And they're then my so phone's good. listening to me. I know. I know. sending me Crazy. ads. So advertising, that's, I mean, I honestly start there because you yeah. can target, you can target who you want to reach. That's the biggest thing is if, if you're paying all this money to reach all these people, but only a small portion of them want what you have mm -hmm. or, or need what you have, then a lot of that money is being wasted to reach people that don't want what you have. Yeah. Um, so that's the benefit. That's the power of, of targeting through social. Now, yeah. that's not to say that, that we don't do other types of advertisement. Um, an example would be Currently, we're in a couple of local publications that are reaching specific communities around our store with with some um, with some marketing. Very community minded uh, yeah. uh, publications, and that's a good fit for us. Very low cost, you know, relatively low cost. Um, so so there's that as well. Um, you know, again, we think of, and I think this is not a traditional way to think about it, but we think about third party delivery as a form of advertisement. Mm -hmm. you know, you're going to pay upwards of 20 plus percent to, to have your product um, delivered by them. But really we, we think of that commission, that 20 plus percent yeah. as really a marketing fee. A it's marketing a line item cost. marketing. Exactly. Yeah. Because what, what it ultimately is again is, is a new customer acquisition strategy. And mm -hmm. then my job is to help convert those people into being you know, clients. So yeah. that is, um, that's advertising. There's a lot of, I mean, there's so many opportunities, you know, like I always tell people uh, when I'm, when I've spoke at Expo in the past yeah. is, you know, you're going to go down, if you've never been to, you know, I always ask, Hey, is, who's first time here? Yeah. Raise their hands. And it's like, all right, you're going to go downstairs and you're going to be like, you know, Lombard. blown away <laughs> by the football <laughs> fields of booths that, yeah. and all of them are trying to sell you something, you know, and if you bought yeah. everything here, you'd be broke and you wouldn't be in business. So um, it, it's the same way with, you know, I have right now, uh, let's see, I have 483 new voicemails on my phone that I've never listened to because um, it's just people that call all day long that are trying to yeah. sell us advertisements or the next thing. And you got to just, don't let other people sell you what to do, you know, yeah. like, you know who your customers are, you know who you want your customers to be, figure out where they're at, figure out how you can reach them the most effectively, whether that's on a yeah. mix of social, um, a billboard, if necessary, yeah. whatever it is, but there's ways to find out. It starts with knowing who your customers are, who you want them to be, and who you need to get through the door, you know, and then you can, you can reach them. In, that's in awesome. Yay. Yeah. We've used yeah. TV in the past too, by the way. And yeah. 
the, the thing about that is, you know, everyone's like, TV's dead, people are cutting the cord. And while some of that's true, um, it, there's, it's, there's still some power in it if you do yeah. it right, you know? So, hey, there's still people like me. I have my Netflix, I have my Hulu, and then I have my digital antenna. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> exactly, exactly, exactly. So right. I still watch my network TV once in a yeah. while. Um, yep. So it's not too bad. Yeah, uh, and, you're seeing, and you're seeing lots of, and by the way, just an aside, is that you're seeing a lot of targeted localized ads on places like um, Hulu and places mm -hmm. like, um, you know, there's these different Roku and things like that. Yeah. So if you can figure out how to get on there and reach your local market that way, another um, place that, we, that we're really seeing some opportunity that we're probably going to start dabbling in is mm -hmm. YouTube advertisement. You yeah. know, those uh, localized YouTube advertisements are really powerful. We've got a local, it's actually a, a we always joke about it here at the office. It's a local cannabis shop. Yeah. Um, that does these really funny, clever advertisements uh, yeah. on these on these videos. So if you're ever watching anything like just that's local around here, you're guaranteed one of their cannabis ads is going <laughs> to pop up, and they're always pretty funny. So yeah. it's kind of cool. But it's like hey, good for those guys for figuring yeah. that out. That's good for them. Well, yeah. and if you're if you're like somebody like me, I mean, I stream my my YouTube to my TV, and I pretty much that's my entertainment usually in right. any, even any given evening. So right. uh, so yeah, I I agree. That's that's yeah. probably a pretty As good people idea. adapt. As people adapt, we have to adapt, you know, as, yeah. as, as technology oh, adapts, we have to adapt. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the only other, other thing I want to hit, hit on is, um, is kind of those um, marketing, those new, new fangled marketing technologies and things that people uh, keep talking about, like chatbots and AR and VR, you know, when, when do you think those, because I, I do know chatbots are starting to become relevant uh, on yeah. website, on P3 websites, yeah. um, but some of that stuff, you know, when do you see that coming into the fold and, and is it closer than I think it is? <laughs> you know, I, I wish I had a good answer for you on that because I'm trying to figure the same thing out for myself, you know? <laughs> yeah. Um, but the reality is, yeah, I'm seeing it too. I'm, I'm kind of where you're at, where it's, it's like, Hey, it's starting to, it's starting to show up. If, if not in actuality, in more and more articles that we're all reading, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Like, oh, VR is the next thing. Like, is it though? Yeah. Um, but so, AR, AR is definitely here because we're all using AR right now. Right, and the Bernie absolutely. Sanders, the, the Bernie Mittens, that is AR at its finest right absolutely. there. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, I don't, I don't know. The, the bigger question is how do you utilize that um, to enhance your experience, to, to be relevant in some way to your brand that would, mm -hmm. you know, because at the end, I mean, you just really need to know who you are as a brand, who you are as like, mm -hmm. what is your brand? And if these things fit, I think that's where the opportunity is, you know, yeah. if, if, and if they don't, they, they never will. Um, so yeah. you don't, don't try to fit a square peg into a round hole. You know, I mean, for us, we're a people business. Like this says Ferrelli's pizza, but it really means like Ferrelli's people. And uh -huh. we're, we're, our job is to grow people so that we yeah. can um, nourish people. And, mm -hmm. and so hospitality is what we do and growing people is what we do. And pizza is the medium by which we do it. Now that's our brand, mm -hmm. but there's some brands, there's some pizzerias. I know, I know many of them from having been at the expo that their brand is we make the best pizza period. Everything else is kind of secondary. We hope you have a good experience. We hope you uh, thought our place looked cool, but the reality is we just wanted you to really taste the best pizza. That's yeah. their brand. And so then you have to decide based on what your brand is, does, does the VR, AR, chatbots, yeah. whatever, do those things match? Do they align? Where's the alignment? Yeah. Where's the opportunity? And yeah, hey, we can do something really cool with that um, mm -hmm. because it matches. And I just think people just got it. They got to take that step back a little bit. I always, I operate around 30,000 feet, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and people always give me crap about that here in the organization, but that's where I live. And uh, I'm always trying to take a, take a look at that. I'm very um, filter everything through our brand. What is our yeah. brand? Does it fit? Because the reality is the opportunities are endless, whether it be yeah. social media, new social media things popping up, um, new technologies popping up. And you just have to be able to have that filter to say, there's going to be new things coming at us all the time. Mm -hmm. um, that does not mean that we should do them. Yeah, it, exactly. We should only do those if they fit with our brand. Yeah. And I think that's the thing that people just need to be mindful of. And, and those technologies will emerge as they align more and more with people's brand. Yeah. Well, the last question I have for you is 
as uh, you know, because a lot of people don't don't have a director of marketing on their right. on their operations. Right. You know, if they're interested in learning more about where to go for, you know, how to how to look into these trends and and you know really be able to evaluate what works for them. You know, what kind of advice would you give them on that? Yeah, I think you know. Step one is to stay up to up to date with with like publications like yours because mm -hmm. you guys are out there doing that work. You know the work the work that I do for our organization, which is out that kind of vetting these things and running them through the filter of our brand. You guys are kind of doing that on the large scale for um, the industry. So mm -hmm. publications such as yours are a, a invaluable resource, um, especially for the mom and pops that don't have a person like myself on on the on the squad. Um, that's step one. But step two is really tapping into their people. You know, chances are they've hired people that are in the demographic that are keeping up to date with these new tabs. And it's, it's taking some time, setting time mm -hmm. apart, investing in your people, creating a, uh, a space, you know, once a month meeting or something where maybe, maybe it's an innovation meeting and you say, okay, Hey, what are you guys seeing out there? Like bring it to the table. Let's let a, help us determine what our brand is. What do you feel the brand is? What do you feel the brand is? Let's really mm -hmm. dial that in. Let's make that succinct. And let's use that as our filter that we're running everything through. And then once a month, let's bring everybody to the table that makes sense, all of our stakeholders in the, in the company. Mm -hmm. And let's say, hey, what are you seeing out there? What opportunities are you seeing out there? What, what threats are you seeing out there? We do this once a year now. It's our strategic planning session with all of our leaders in the company. And we, we evaluate what's, what is, what's coming down the road that we're, that we, you know, trends that are, that are trending, whether they be an increase in traffic in our area, a decrease in, in uh, uh, jobs because people are laid off right now, et cetera. Um, what are all these trends? And if they, if they continue on the path that they're continuing on, what kind of an impact would that have on our, on our, on our yeah. company? And so then we, we take the ones that would have the biggest impact and that we feel are the most likely to occur. Yeah. And, and we focus our effort on building uh, what we refer to as initiatives, plans essentially to combat those as if they're going to happen. And it, by, utilizing that strategy we have been prepared for this pandemic we have been um, able to not only uh, survive through it but we are actually growing through it uh, mm -hmm. we, we were looking at new sites we're, we're, we're being prepared to grow and and that's not to um, minimize the struggles that our industry is facing right now and it, it has yeah. not been easy by any stretch for us no. to even be in that position but we're in that position because um, we were forward thinking and we're preparing ourselves for the future. And so I think it starts there. I think it starts there. It starts by, you know, staying up to date with what's going on in the industry. Your, your team's out there doing that work for our industry. Thank you very much. You. And then let utilize your people because your people, they're not, they're not dumb. They're not just people that come and clock in and you know, whatever you hired them for a reason. They're good people. Mm -hmm. um, utilize them, put this, noodle of theirs to work, get the team bonded together and coming back to the table with ideas, they'll feel very invested in the success of your company because it'll become their company. It'll become, they'll, they'll have some ownership in that process. So that would be my, my recommendation. It's probably, it may or may not be the recommendation you were looking for. No, but, that's uh, excellent. It's been the one it. that's worked, it's been the one that's worked really well for us, you know, that strategic yeah. planning with our people and yeah. the buy-in is, is awesome and the results have been proven. Yeah, I mean, it makes perfect sense, and it, uh, it it's a it's a benefit in more ways more ways than just coming up with the plan. So that's what's beautiful about it. So yeah, the the last thing I'll say too is don't we have to always be learning, mm -hmm. always be learning. And so, like again, back to your publication and and um, like expo and even different expos. Like sometimes mm -hmm. we try to take a look at. Uh, you know, where, where do we maybe have a blind spot? Like the, the pizza expo is awesome. You go there, you get inspired and fired up and, and whatever, but then again, and then we'll check out an additional expo like that food service technology expo. Like, Hey, we don't yeah. know enough about technology. Let's go check that one out too. Or yeah. we don't know enough. And it might be one that's not even related to the restaurant industry. And it's just <laughs> that there's something there like, Hey, let's go to this, you know, social media managers expo, or let's go yeah. to the local marketing expo or whatever it is. Yeah. I'm always wanting to go to craft beer expos. I mean, yeah, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. So, um, there's, there's opportunity all over the place to always be learning. 
Absolutely. Oh man, yep. you are so great. See, I knew, I knew, I, I knew if I picked your brain, it would just be like, <laughs> so, oh awesome. yeah, I love this stuff. I love this stuff. <laughs> That's cool. All right. Well, yeah. thank you so much for you popping on with me today. And, um, and this is going to go into, I think the, gosh, we're already planning uh, the March issue. So okay. <laughs> it's going to cool. go into the March issue. So, okay. awesome. and actually we're planning the April issue right now. So yeah, that nice. boggles my mind that it's, it, I'm already looking at April right now. Yeah. <laughs> so. yeah, so you're out there, you're strategic planning, you're way out there. <laughs>